when people talk about poems and craft, they often talk about the, the white space around a poem and how to activate the white space of a poem. And for this book, for all the names given, I was trying to take that idea further and think about how to activate the silence. How do I disrupt one's assumption um, of what sound is and uh, what the function of sound is in, in, in the world? And there are a few things that inspired that. One of, the, one of them was um, that when I go to the cinema uh, and during the pandemic, I was watching all of these films on subtitles and there are different uh, kind of uh, sounds that I just don't hear. So it's, it's always a moment for me when I watch a film and it, and it captions a sound which I don't hear. So for example, um, you'll, you'll see a caption that's for me that says something like alarm rings, cattle whistles, and for me, that's a conceptual experience because I'm seeing the language and I'm having to imagine that. But if I put a caption on the page, then I'm democratizing that experience. I'm giving that to, any, to everyone who th who's then invited into this kind of imagined space. And that was a tiny little idea which then blossomed into this kind of ambition to do that throughout a book can i sustain this idea through a book um, and also use sound not only as a kind of um, evocative poetic moment but as a, a way to transition and move through time and space i'd say that one of my most disruptive traumas actually is going to school and being told that I couldn't write uh, going to school and kind of feeling like I was not able to do this thing that I love to do even as a kid I wrote poetry and then get, you know my mom would get these letters home that would say things like you know um, we're pretty sure Raymond is dyslexic uh, he, he can't, you know, his, his writing isn't very intelligible. Um, he's very quiet. He doesn't speak much. Um, he's half Jamaican. Is he smoking weed? Lots of really strange um, and I think racial and class-based uh, assumptions uh, about, you know, me and how I was read at that time. And I think it, it really, it really affected me. I really kind of carried that actually um, in a way that I feel like poetry is this often seen as this really difficult thing to do. And again, it's always been this thing that I feel at home in. And when I realized when I started sharing my work with people was that it seemed to change our, my relationship with these people. It, was, it would often surprise people. Um, and it also gave me a vessel in which to speak through. I think growing up, I was pretty quiet. I had a very low self-esteem. And so finding esteem in language, finding company in poetry, has in a way um, allowed me to develop as a human, as a person. Um, it's very powerful to be hurt. To be part of this particular shortlist is an, uh, is an honor. I think, like I say about the company being important, I think it's a compelling and uh, I don't want to say the word diverse, but there's a real range of style and background and experience and visions 
um, in the books, in the poets that are on this list. You know, so <laughs> yeah, if I'm honest, it was completely surprising to me. Um, but it's it's an it's an honor. You know, you can't you can't make it happen. You know, it's what is that's what's interesting about this. You write a book, you write what you feel you need to write, you put it out in the world and you see how the world responds. And um, this shortlist being one of those responses, it's an honor. <laughs>